Hello again folks, it is me, Matimus, and I appreciate you stopping by on today's video. We are once again discussing naval warfare ships, and two very special ones today in particular. The Littoral Combat Ship class is a new family of surface ships for the US Navy, and today we're going to discuss a little bit about them and how they work across the oceans today. The LCS are a fast, highly maneuverable, networked surface combat ship which is specialized as a variant of the family of the US Future Service Combat Ships known as the DDX. The LTSs are designed to satisfy the urgent requirement for shallow draft vessels to operate in littoral, otherwise known as coastal waters, to counter growing potential asymmetric threats of coastal mines, quiet diesel submarines, and the potential to carry explosive terrorists on small, fast-armed boats, similar to the kind of pirates that we're seeing across the African continent. In May 2004, the Department of the US Defense said that the US Navy announced the selection of two separate defense contracting teams led by Lockheed Martin and General Dynamics to each carry out system design and options for the detailed design and construction of two Flight Zero or first generation LCS ships. The number of LCS ships is really not finalized yet, but it is speculated up to 60 of these ships are going to be part of the US naval arsenal of a fleet of a total of 375 ships by the year of 2025. Astull secured a $584 million contract to build the LCS-28 ship in June 2017, followed by a contract to build the LCS-30 in October 2017. Now you'll notice throughout this footage there are two different designs of the ships, and that's because they come under the same class but they are quite different designs. Although both satisfy the top level performance requirements and technical requirements of this LCS program. Ladies and gentlemen, these ships are fast. They both achieve sprint speeds of more than 40 knots and a long range transit distance of up to 3,500 miles. The Lockheed Martin Freedom class design is a high-speed semi-planing monohull. Yes, it is a funky looking ship, but looks extremely modern for modern day naval warfare. The General Dynamics Independence class design is a trimarian with a slender stabilized monohull. The C-frames of both designs accommodate the equipment and crew for the core of the LCS missions and special missions. The primary focus of this ship, folks, is that it can be pretty much tasked for just about anything. It is the first real true multi-purpose ship, allowing it to fulfill a whole range of tasks. They are both capable of effective launch and control of recovery of vehicles for extended periods. However, the strategy for launch and recovery for waterborne craft and aircraft are different in the two designs. The two designs also use very different approaches for incorporating reconfigurable internal volume. The design approach for the second generation LCS Flight 1 ship acquisition was flexible and would still take into consideration the experience gained in the Flight Zero designs. In both designs, the sprint speed ranging between 40 to 50 knots results in the body of the hull actually being lifted out of the water as much as possible. The Lockheed Martin design of the mono hull lifts the body out of the water as the hull pretty much tries to plane the water. With the slender stabilized mono hull, the General Dynamics Trimarian design uses two outriggers, which move the displacement upwards and reduce wetted surface. The shaping of the hull in both design strategies give a really good signature reduction, which therefore leaves less bubbles in the water and therefore not being able to see from the sky as much. The core capabilities of these ships is rather impressive. A 10 foot full load displacement draft allows the ships to access very shallow waters. The ships will have a very impressive top speed but also a economical speed of 20 knots giving an extended range of 4,300 nautical miles. Mission packages will be Mine Warfare or MIW, Anti-Submarine Warfare ASW and Anti-Surface Warfare SUW. The ships are configured with a helicopter deck and hangar. The deck is capable of the launch and recovery of an MH-60R-S helicopter and a tactical unmanned aerial vehicle. The ships can carry out aircraft launch and recovery in conditions up to sea state of 5, for instance in winds of up to 27 knots and an average wave height between 6.4 feet and 9.6 feet. The ships will be capable of launching and recovering all watercraft at 40 knot high speed, but within 50 minutes of condition of sea state 4 with waves of up to 5 feet and winds up to 21 knots, allowing this ship to deliver boats extremely quickly. General Dynamics Robot Systems was awarded the US Navy contract to develop the Common Launch and Recovery System or CLRS of the unmanned and other watercraft vehicles in the July 2008 period. The ships will be carrying provisions of up to 21 days before replenishments are needed, and the crew size will maintain between 15 to 50 people, accommodating up to a maximum of 75 crew and specialized mission crew. 
In all fairness though folks, the core capability of these craft are to deploy the Fire Scout unmanned aerial vehicle and the unmanned rib boat. One of the most impressive features on this ship is its ability to switch between mission packages, which basically has been designed by Northrop Grumman and appointed as its mission package integrator. The different modules that can be placed on this ship have already been mentioned, but anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare and anti-mine warfare. For the mine detecting ship, it will be given the ANWLD-1 remote mine hunting system, along with the ANAQS-20 Alpha sonar mine detecting set. The ASW module includes the Sea Talon, the Tactical Littoral Ocean Network and the Undersea Surveillance System, being developed by Lockheed Martin as a maritime system and sensor network, which integrates a range of different acoustic sensors and semi-submersible vehicles with a network that connects to all other ships. Passive sensors include the Advanced Deployable System or ADS, which is a rapidly deployable bottom array with acoustic surveillance systems. The semi-submersible ANWLD-1 with an ASW mission system tows a remote towed active source or RTAS multi-band transducer with a remotely towed array multi-functional sonar. Overall folks, this ship is very, very good at locating mines and submarines, so it's probably not a good idea if it is trying to hunt our beautiful aircraft carriers around the world. The ASW module also includes systems to be deployed from the MH-60R helicopters and the Mark 54 torpedoes, Sonoboys and Raytheon AN AQS-22 airborne low frequency sonar which can be towed or dipped into the water. An unmanned service vehicle or USV allows for more dipping sonar, multi-static active sonar and U-Light ultra lightweight towed arrays. General Dynamics Robotics was awarded the contract for the USVs and the ASW model in October 2006. The 11 meter fleet class USV weighs 7.7 .7 tons and has a payload of 2,270 kilograms, a speed of 35 knots and is capable of operating continuously for more than 24 hours. This is basically an unmanned vehicle that can be deployed and sent out to scout and locate other locations other than what the ship is trying to do at the time. Both of the General Dynamics and Lockheed Martin vessels are armed with the beautiful BAE Systems Land and Armaments formerly United Defense Mark 110 57mm naval gun system and the Mark 1110 Mark 295 ammunition set at a range of 220 rounds a minute to a range of 14 kilometers or 9 miles. The slender, stabilized trimaran monohull proposed by the General Dynamics team has an overall length of 127 meters and a maximum beam of 28.4 meters with a Full load displacement of 2,637 tons. The sea frame of the ship is actually based on the Ostal's design for a passenger car ferry ship, which is rather interesting because now it's been put into military application, it looks really, really cool. The Raytheon Sea Ram anti ship missile defense system is installed on the hangar roof of this ship. The Sea Ram combines the sensors of the Phalanx 1B close in weapon system but replaces the 20mm gun with 11 missile launchers for the rolling airframe missile or Ram. 50 caliber machine gun mounts are installed on the port and starboard on the walkway of either side of the hangar and at the stern just below the level stern helicopter deck. The decoy systems include three Super RBOCs and two Nalka decoy launchers. The countermeasure suite will include the ES-3601 Tactical Radar Electronic Support Measures or ECMs from the EDO Corporation. The towed sonar and decoys are launched from the stern of the ship as usual. Northrop Grumman Electronic Systems provides the integrated combat management system which is basically the heart of the ship and is core to making sure most of the systems work together. The main mast carries the Link 16, Link 1, CEC and the Saab Microwave Systems formerly Ericsson Sea Giraffe Radar, a very important surface control system that allows the ship to protect itself and other vessels in the fleet. Overall folks, these are some impressive warships for the US Navy and it seems as though they focus primarily on interoperability and speed. These ships are fast and highly maneuverable and that is something that you really want to be able to protect the fleet for those gaps that you can't quite get with some of the larger ships that you have like the Aegis and you know some of the more even bigger ships like aircraft carriers. Um, being that the fact that there are very high risk threats coming from small boats that can get through the fleet undetected, these ships are going to be the ones that can protect the fleet when it comes to the nooks and crannies that the bigger ships cannot handle. It is also the most important mission of these ships to really get to a point very very quickly and deploy quick reaction forces such as special forces or to ships that can you know rescue other ships or provide support to ground forces from distance at sea. 
The ship's primary focus though is really trying to support the fleet and make sure that any of the special forces, air crews that need to be dropping off supplies are able to do so. Not really a supply ship but still able to do so, the aircraft hangars are going to provide a lot of humanitarian aid if needed and also for any crew management that may be needed between ship and ship. Overall though, I really do find that this is one hell of a ship package. A lot of money has gone into this program, folks, and uh, the US Navy has done a winner, I think, with these ships, considering that they really do want something that is fast, maneuverable, and overall modern. You know, they've gone for a design that is not the usual that we're used to. Uh, you know, the different planing design that they have, the different hull shapes, and I find that fascinating and something that I think we're going to see a lot more of in navies around the world. And, you know, hopefully the U.S. Navy is going to sell on to the British Navy some of these things in the future. Who knows? I doubt it, though. I doubt we're actually going to buy these. Um, I'm not too sure how, um, you know, other militaries are going to take on different kinds of ship packages like this. But it would be interesting to see if they did. Maybe they're even going to find even better designs, even faster designs to make their ships go even faster. Who knows? But I think the U.S. Navy has definitely hit a winner with these ships. And uh, I hope they serve them very, very well in the future. So that is it from me today, folks. A very impressive line of ships here, and uh, I'd love to hear your opinion on it in the comments section below. Please leave me a like. If you wish to support my channel, go check out my Patreon account, and any donations made towards supporting my channel is very, very much appreciated. So thank you, everyone who has been so far. Um, again, if you wish to share this on Facebook, I would really appreciate that. And I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day. Any of you who are serving in the navies around the world, my hat's off to you. I know I'm a groundie, but I have a lot of respect for those of you working hard at the perils of the sea. I hope you have a great day, folks. Take care. Bye-bye.